Equine Solutions, the pop cow coming down here at the, the great uh, high country of the Gross Vaunt Wilderness. And right now I'm with uh, one of my elk hunting buddies here, Hoyle, and he's going to help me uh, what we're going to do today, which is what we're going to do today. Tie a high line. We're going to tie a high line. That's what we're going to do for livestock. And we're not doing it for overnight. We might do it more for when we're doing saddling because if you look behind you, we got our horses picketed. Alright, so the first thing we do is we got uh, the plan is, is from this tree right here, you follow the purple rope and it goes to another tree with some horses just uh, stationed there temporarily. Uh, and that's where another anchor point is going to be. On this side here, what we're going to do is a, what we call the tensionless anchor because there's no tension on it. So, first thing we're going to do is to help the oil here, we're going to grab this rope. He's going to go behind, he's just going to hold it there. And all his job is is to hold on to it. I'm going to go around the tree, make sure it's horizontal. Just gonna do a round turns all the way around. I'm gonna do about probably about six of them. Because what I don't want to do is scar up the bark. That's why we're wrapping around multiple times. And I'm gonna make sure that the rope is touching where there's no gaps and no crossovers like this. Nice and even all the way around. And you can see I got the bundle in my hand. And what I'm using is old rock climbers uh, repel rope that you can get from colleges or whoever's just starting to roll the rock climbing ropes. I like to use them a lot because uh, they do pretty well in the water and the nature's elements. So I'm just going to keep on going. And we're pretty much in, I mean, wraps really need, but I'm just going to keep going and give up my access here. Okay, what I'm about to this part right here is where I'm going to do my knot. All right, so all we're going to do is create a, a loop like this. See, it's crossed. And this is for the figure eight knot we're going to make. And we're just going to bring it over like this. Now what you see is one loop here and one loop there. I'm going to take the, the running end of the rope, feed it through. And I have a figure eight knot. Now because I'm going to do a figure eight retrace on this high line, I'm simply going to take the running end of the rope once again over top of the high line. And I'm going to retrace the figure eight pattern going from north to south. So you can see, I'm tightening it up. Now this line runs, so I follow it around. Comes behind here, draw it up tight. Comes back around and back through the standing end, which is anchored to the tree. Then what I'm going to do is pull it down and I'm going to make sure everything's cleaned up. What I mean by cleaned up is everything runs parallel. You see how this is not running parallel here like this. So what I'm going to do is fix it. And that's what I mean by cleaning up the rope. Okay, now you can see every strand is parallel going on this figure eight retrace knot, even on the back. Okay, now I can see there's a little crisscross right here, so we're going to fix it to make sure it is clean. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. 
Just gonna clean it up like I said. Draw it tight. Okay, double check. Now I have everything nice and neat and running parallel. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that's my figure eight knot right there. Remember, this is a tensionless knot on this anchor point right here. The main line is gonna walk all the way down to their side. there okay once we have the tension tensionless hitch done what we're going to do is start putting uh, butterfly knots all the way down uh this rope and what i like to do is uh, the reason we're doing this because we try to stay six feet away from a tree uh and 12 feet between in individual horses so six foot here six foot there now one thing i'm going to caution you on is the rope some ropes is like the, the stretch when you tie this one up it will stretch quite a bit, okay? So you gotta put that in factor when we start tying knots. So I might be six feet away from that direction, but I guarantee when we pull it up, we'll end up being about eight foot that direction, okay? So to do this knot, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a bite. I'm gonna twist once and twice then i'm going to lay it back on itself i'm going to lay it back on itself there's going to be this x created here i'm going to take the top of the loop run it through the x and pull it through Now you'll see what I have for checkpoints is I got a nice X right here. I got the loop through. I got one bar here, one bar here. And you go to the other side, I have two locking bars. This is where you're going to tie your horse to. So this is called the Alpine Butterfly Knot. Okay. So that's one way of getting the job done. Now I have a strand of rope. All I'm going to do is create a bite. This is a bite. With that bite, I was going to twist towards me, which is counterclockwise once, counterclockwise twice, okay? When I have it like that, you can see it, okay? I'm going to bring the loop, okay, you see the twist right here, and I'm pointing with my finger. I'm going to open it up, keeping that twist there. I'm going to pinch this rope right here. I'm going to pretend this is on the high line, so I'm going to... Spread the lines out so you can kind of see. Now what I'm going to do is take the bite, bend it forward like such. I'm just folding the loop towards myself, the, my belly button. Now I'm going to take my fingers, go right through this hole right here. And what I'm going to do is grab the tip of the bite and pull it through. And when I lock it down, you're gonna see pretty cool checkpoints. You're gonna have two parallel loops right here and one locker bar, one locker bar on this side. And the other side, you're just gonna have an X. So if you have this X on this other side, you know that you have done the Alpine butterfly correctly. This is also a good high line not to use. You just tie your lead rope here and you'll see, uh, once we utilize the, the high line, how we tie the horses to one of these rings. Savvy? And then we got Hoyle making another one down this direction. Good. Okay. 
Now there's another knot I'm going to show you besides this one, and that would be the wireman's knot. Right here, I'm going to put a wireman's knot. And basically, this one, all I'm going to do is lay the, the rope from the base going from south to north. Go around once, go around twice, go around three times. Okay, so I got the rope wrapped around three times around my hand. I'm going to take the middle rope, go around my left. Now I'm a middle over the right, middle over left, and then pull the middle through. And I have what's called affectionately called the wireman's knot. This one I got taught a long time ago in Boy Scout camp with an old Coast Guard Navy guy. And you can see what it looks like right there. It looks like just a gob of wires rolled together, but it's real pretty. You got one loop there, one loop there, the loop there, and loop there, and you can tie to. And that's a real common one you can use for a high line too. Okay, so I have the camera going over my right shoulder so you can see the knots better while I'm tying them. This one's gonna be the wireman's knot. I am right-handed, so I'll do everything right-handed. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of rope, and once again, I'm gonna run it from south to north, wrap the rope around my hand, There's two loops, and then I'm going to make my third loops. Now, this is called the wireman's knot. Now, you can see I have it real close or tight to my hand. That's going to be a small, small loop. So, one key ingredient you're going to want to know about this is when I do the wireman's knot, what I will do is make sure that the loops are a little bit bigger, but the same size. Okay, so I have them. Two loops right there, and I got three across the palm of my hand. Now this is a sequence. You always start with the middle one. I'm going to take the middle, go over the left strand. The middle, once again, over the right strand. Now the new middle is going to go over the left strand. Once I've done that, I'm going to grab the middle one, and I'm going to pull it through. And at the same time, I'm going to re-grab the two ropes below. And all I'm going to do is draw it up tight. And that there is called the wireman's knot. This is a good knot, once again, to be able to tie the lead rope to a horse and keep him there on the high line. What's nice about this is when you draw it down tight here, you can see all the different crisscrosses of the wireman's knot okay you got one loop there 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 okay so those are checkpoints to make sure that you have this knot correctly it's a real easy knot yeah uh, everything starts with that middle strand okay Press it down. I already like that one better, Travis. <laughs> They're both pretty easy. Pull this because that'll clean it up more. That way. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's the wireman's knot. All right, so we're gonna let oil do one more down here. Times charm. Oh, one more off of this tree, trail. Okay, now we're good right there. Okay, so once we get to this tree right here for the anchor point, what we're going to do is call the uh, transport tightening system. So, what we're going to do again is we are going to Make a figure eight. Once, twice. 
I'm gonna reach through what I created, pull a loop out. You can see my eight right there. And once again, I'm gonna put a figure eight once, twice. Okay. And I'm gonna pull loop through. Okay. Then I'm gonna do a half hitch on it. Like such. So I'm going to pull it tight just to see how close I get to the tree. Not doing too bad there. Put my opposing carabiners on again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my carabiners, the opening gate, I'm going to place it right through the loop. I'm going to take my other one and I'm going to do a posing, okay? So what I'm going to do is flip it over, face it the other direction. Now I got ones going up and ones going down, okay? Now these ones are built a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do so that the gates don't pop open same, you can see like that and like that, they're opposing each other. Okay, so once I have this system going right here, I'm going to leave it and then I'm going to grab my tree saver, which is, you know, Travis, he likes his fire hoses. Okay, what I'm going to do is feed it through the end of this rope. Then we're going to place the tree saver on the back of the tree pretty high. Right about right there, and we're going to pull the rope through. Now we're just going to pull. Once I'm at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bundle this rope up in the coils. And I'm going to wrap around one round, turn it around. Take the tree saver, bring it down. Then I'm going to place my rope around it. Okay. Once I'm up to this position here, all I'm going to do is two round turns with a bite. One. Bring it back through. So I got my two round turns and a bite. The bite being the loop here. Pull it tight and it won't come undone. Then what we're going to do is take our bundle to the near side of the tree, bring it right over top of everything, slide it over. Take the excess here, and all I'm going to do is do a half hitch over top of it. That way my rope doesn't get gnawed on by any varmints. I'm going to throw one more half hitch on there so that when the wind rattles and does everything, it doesn't come undone. And that, 
basically all you do to make a high line. You see it's up high. I'm tying up here. It's above the horse's withers. I could tie up here. It's going to be a little bit of slack, but it's really not bad. Okay, so this is a one way of getting a high line down. Howdy, right, folks, down here at the ranch. Just got back from Wyoming. I was going over the high line uh, movie that I'm going to present to you, and I noticed that I was tightening up the high line system on the tensioner here. and now I explain the best way to probably use the apparatus. I'm going to show you again how to pull on it. So you'll see that I have the rope going around the anchor point, going straight down into the, the carabiners. Remember, they're opposing. You can see that they're opposing. One's open this way, one's on the other side. Okay. Now, nice thing about this setup is I get the most torque by pulling on this side and tightening up the system. That's why I call it a transport system. As long as I keep tension on it, it'll keep tightening up on itself and then I can follow going around this way, okay? Now, if you have an obstacle on this side, like I showed on the video up in Wyoming, you can also do the same thing by going on this side and tightening up the system. A little bit harder but still able to tighten up the high line so i just kind of wanted to show you that that's what i like about the transport tightening system is because you can go around both ends once i'm here i'm just going to go around my anchor point well, first i'm going to bundle everything up and make my coils Okay, so I still got my tension on there. I'll come up here. I'll tighten it one more time. It's tight. Come back around. I'll retrace everything. Come around to the outer edge. And I could drop my bundle to the ground. Okay? Then all I'm going to do is take, create a bite. Go around the top of everything. Draw it tight. Take my bite. Go back up around and back through itself and it really what I got is two half hitches and a bite right here in location okay once I'm here I got straight tension then I'm just gonna run a half hitch right over top of my bite and lock it down to place easy pleasy now if I got room right here what I could do is coil up my rope again that I discarded the first time and I'm going to make big loops big loops same size uniformity on the size of the loops until I get to where I just have a little bit of rope hanging off as a tail the reason I'm going to do the big loops like this is because I'm going to take my rope and go over top uh, between the anchor where my knot system is and create a bend over it and draw it down halfway to the other loop so I'm basically folding it in half do it again there we go go underneath I got my X right there still slide it up Gravity is defying me at this moment and lock it down. Now you're going to say, Travis, why did you fold it over? Well, for safety reasons. If I have a horse, and yes, it's supposed to be 12 feet away from the pole, kind of half, probably six feet at the minimum, I don't want them to have no chance of stepping inside the loop. If they're pawing or whatever, I don't want no chance for them to get caught up. So I bend it in half with half inch. I got self or safe storage of my rope right here. 
Alright, we're going to talk about this high line that's behind me over my left shoulder. And uh, I'm going to talk about another solution if you don't tie uh, an alpine butterfly knot or the, <coughs> excuse me, the wireman's knot. There is also this solution here. This is called the inline swivel. And uh, it's a piece of metal, so you can put it where you want to. It has a nice swivel on it, so when you tie the lead rope on it, it can go 360 degrees around. Uh, they do sell these at different locations. I know Outfitter Supply up Montana sells them, and it's real easy to use if you're not uh, in tune with your knots. And really, it's a no knot system. That's why it was developed. So that's the advantage. Disadvantage is if you have a whole bunch of these, it's a little bit of weight to it, okay? So real easily, all you're gonna do is create a bite. Place the bite through the little rectangle here on the handle. Slide the bite over top of the swivel and pull down on it. And what keeps it in place is once this uh, high line goes to the anchor point this way and same thing with this way, and you draw it tight, it will lock down on itself like this, okay? So I did want to cover this with you folks. Uh, I just say that this is another way of getting after it with a no-knot system other than the bite. And uh, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. The only thing is you got a little bit more weight to your pack load if you are using them versus just using a simple knot, okay? Uh, I really like these type of knots, uh, the Alpine Butterfly Knot and the Wireman's Knot because no matter how much tension is on it, you can always undo the knot. One knot you should never use, and I'll, and I'll just cover this real quick. And it's probably the easiest for most folks, but it's a common problem or issue for people just learning how to tie a knot on the high line. What they like to do is create a bite, and what they'll do is they will just make an overhand knot on a bite and pull through. The problem with this knot is, is if you have a load on it, it will really sink down hard and it is a pain in the rear end to undo it once it is pulled very, very tight, okay? So that's why we never use that knot on a high line. And that is why we either use the wireman's knot or the alpine butterfly knot or this little handy thing here so there you go more knowledge which makes you become the solution all right folks so with uh, the tip locker tie ring is uh, depending on the diameter rope you can either use a tip locker tie ring or not uh, this is about a 3 8 estimation of a rock climber's rope. I can't find the millimeter for it, so I'm guessing 3 8 But anyhow, you create a bite and you go right through the Ted Blocker upper tie ring. Then all you're going to do is take the bite, open it up, slide it down, and then you have it locked in place. And then if you pretend I had this end tied to an anchor point, you can see I could tie the horse up to this piece of portion okay so that's one thing I'll caution you with is just make sure that you can use a tape blocker tie ring they are handy for multiple occasions and multiple purposes and that's one way you can use the, the tie ring okay so I just want to point that out another way of getting the job done thank you all right folks so you can see we're packed up here uh, for the most part and uh, on the high line, just want to know that you always try to get high enough where you can have a horse standing with the load, they don't get caught on the high line, and then they freak out and get real western. So I just want to throw that out there for a tip. Always make adjustments on your rope because they'll sag on you, whether or play with them. So you're always constantly tightening, them, tightening the rope up that way at the proper height that the horse doesn't get caught on anything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we have is the mule and horses, all our livestock is tied up to the high line. Kind of just wanted to uh, show everybody on this channel, after we get them done being picking steak, I like to throw, or we like to throw a nose bag on them up on the high line, and then uh, do a once over on them 
see what injuries they might have possibly picked up through the night if there's any rope burns from the picket uh, ropes which i doubt or are they just uh rolling around out there and just kind of brushed up on something pokey or whatever so if we just do it once over you can see they're nice and comfortable and you can also see that there's good spacing between all the animals here also point of note is you can see that the lead ropes are long and that's in order for the horse to be able to lower its head down to the ground so they could shove their nose down into the feed a little bit easier inside of the nose bag once we're done uh, feeding them what we generally do is shore up the the lead rope and that way they don't get tangled up now if you are doing overnight trip and you trained your horses to uh, be able to stand there with a long uh, lead line tied low uh, it's generally a pretty good idea because they can actually lay down and uh, sleep a little bit and they know that they're they can get out of the rope because they experienced the sensation of being uh, tied up with it being long so you just got to watch your horses when you do that for a little while until they get used to it uh, a lot of people do it uh, i've done it in the past especially if you got hay down and you're throwing it down for feed and then i'll just leave them overnight with a long lead rope as you can see right here and they can lay down and they get up when they want to and then in the morning once i put the nose bag on i'll tie it all back up if they're just going to stay here all day so that's generally what i do and i just wanted to show you this high line in use out here in the high country pretty neat <music> here's your biggest safety tip out there before you go to the back country and the high country try to set up something like this as a high line station for training your horse teach them that they can sit there patiently on a high line and get trained up before you take them to the back country it'll save you a long time it doesn't have to be nothing fancy this is real simple of recycled material for telephone poles drill the hole through it put a cable that we found and then i just went to the uh, hardware store and got a few uh, turn collars and uh, cable buckles and so forth to make it anchor points for a tie station. Easy pleasy, gets them nice and relaxed, rested. These horses are training here uh, for clients. But the point being is I want them trained up before I take them up onto the high country. I hope that helps you out. Stay safe now. Take care. Adios. <music>